This is CBC News. From CBC Toronto, the news at 4.30. Good afternoon. I'm Robert Fisher, downtown scattered cloud. The voice of authority there and an introduction my next guest will make this afternoon for the last time. Robert Fisher retires today after an incredible 49 years in journalism, much of it covering politics. We often talk about the importance of institutional memory around the halls of the CBC here. There is no one more knowledgeable when it comes to Queen's Park and provincial politics than Robert Fisher. Over his career, he has followed eight premiers, countless leadership conventions, a whole number of political scandals as well. He is one of the classiest people in broadcasting, somebody that I've learned a lot from in the time that I've worked with him. We've spoken with him many times on Metro Morning. We wanted to grab him before he walked out of the building to talk about his career. Good morning. Morning, Matt. Thank you for reading it the way I wrote it. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate you uh, taking the time <laughs> in a busy day to come and say goodbye. Yeah. Um, oh, boy. There are significant days in, in one's mm -hmm. life. Um, this would be one of them. How does it feel? Um, well, it's it's clearly a mix of emotions. I, um, you know, I have... Uh, adored uh, this business as long as it's been going on and you know I tell people I started in June of 1967 in a little thousand watt station in Oakville um, a, a fellow who hired me by the name of Howard Kane who was really the first person who kind of believed that I could you know work in radio for the princely sum of $55 a week and uh, so that you know it, it's um, it's kind of a mix of emotions you uh, lots of things running through your head this morning I woke up at 4 a.m. and I'm thinking about all the people that I've met all mm -hmm. the great people I've worked with uh, all the premiers I've interviewed all the prime ministers all the you know kings and queens and everything else that I've done over the years the sports people um, uh, you know I think one of the moments I'll never forget was spending a day with Walter Cronkite uh, and I, I still haven't washed my right hand from that handshake. <laughs> Sadly, didn't get a picture, but of course, this is long before Twitter, right? So, and uh, and iPhones. But nevertheless, it's um, it, it's an interesting day, and I guess it will unfold as it should. I'll be on the air at noon, and I'll finish at 5:30, and um, and say au revoir. How do you think coverage of politics has changed in the time that you've been involved in it? Well, in my own case, of course, I started on a typewriter, and I'm ending on Twitter. Uh, and I'm not necessarily sure that that's, you know, a vast improvement. The technology has made a huge difference. Um, I remember days of campaigning in Ontario when if you went to Sault Ste. Marie, for example, you had to put your videotape in a grapefruit bag and you would had to bribe a private pilot to fly it to Winnipeg and then Winnipeg would put it on an Air Canada flight and would be a copy clerk. Often people like Mary Weens, actually, tell you the truth, who would go to the airport, pick it up, bring it home and and edit it. Now, of course, you've got this selfie phone and a selfie stick and you're all sort of portable and you don't need a cameraman and a sound man and away you go. Yeah. And I think there's good and bad about that because you can get to more places. I mean, in, in the early days of campaigning in this province, Matt, because it is such a large province, mm. you, uh, you might get one campaign event in a day from, say, northern Ontario and the campaigns were geared for that, but it didn't provide a lot of sort of detail about that campaign day. What do you think... Um in, in that time, as things have changed, th the most significant story or issue that you've covered has been... I mean, we can talk about personalities, mm. we can talk about scandal, we can... But what do you think the big thing, the, the, the game changer is and has been in the time that you've been covering politics? Well, I, I, I sort of go back to Thanksgiving weekend of 1984 uh, when William Grenville Davis decided he would not seek the federal Tory leadership race. I, I think perhaps worried that Peter Lougheed, the then Alberta Premier, might run. But he decided to resign and, and that set in motion something I think many people, most people in the province at that point wouldn't have expected, nor certainly would his party. They moved from Bill Davis and the Big Blue Machine to the late Frank Miller and his Tartan train. And the results of the 1985 election would show you very clearly the Tartan train really never left the station. Mm -hmm. uh, and we brought back a minority government in Ontario, and then Bob Ray and David Peterson, you know, had an accord. They were careful, didn't want to call it a coalition. In fact, they even signed the accord separately, didn't want to be seen signing the paper together. You know, all these little things are the machinations of politics. And so that brought about this humongous change in Ontario politics because most people, and Bob Ray, David Peterson, would probably agree if they were sitting here, uh, grew up believing that Ontario had been ruled and would always be ruled by Conservatives. And all of a sudden, virtually, you know, overnight, 
um, you saw 42 years of conservative rule ended and, and the process of changing. And then, of course, the change happened again in 1990 when mm-hmm. Bob Ray came to power. And as I've often said to my good friend, the former premier, you know, he wanted to be premier in the worst way and got his wish. He, it's interesting. You say good friend. Yep. I mean, when you do this for long enough, people will say, oh, he's biased. He's this way or he's that way. People And, and you get – it doesn't matter how you're covering politics. No. You get those letters. You get those accusations. <laughs> yes. How have you dealt with that? Well, my standard answer is if, uh, and you're right, You, no matter what you do, you're always seen as being a partisan for somebody. I don't recall being considered a partisan for Mike Harris, but then perhaps that's for a chapter in a book somewhere. But uh, you, you do face that. Um, my standard answer is, and over the years I was at Queen's Park full time, and since all of the three parties that were, that were there have offered jobs, have wanted to be, you know, candidate. In fact, the first offer to run was back in 1983. William Davis uh, and John Tory approached me. Mr. Davis asked me if I would ever thought of running, mm-hmm. and my smart aleck answer to him was, but Mr. Davis, for which party? To which Mr. Davis took his pipe out and said to John Tory, then his principal secretary, I think this interview's over. <laughs> <laughs> but I can recall a time more recently, Matt Federley, where I was approached by two parties, which I, I had a friend who said, you should have gone after both nominations. I was asked by the NDP to run Federley and the Canadian Alliance. So you couldn't have had more disparate kind of political parties that seemed to think I might just be a member. But I've, uh, people have asked me outside, will I run? Um, let me give you the Bill Davis answer. I have no plans to have any plans to have any plans. This is a question that came from one of our listeners. What would you ask yourself at the end of such a distinguished career? Well, what was your conduct as a journalist? And? And, um, you know, I shave every morning, look in the mirror. Sometimes it's shocking, of course. But um, I, And I've always told the journalism students that I've taught, both at college and university, that uh, you, you have to set a compass and you have to stand by it. And sometimes it's a difficult thing to stay by it. But you also have to be able to look at yourself in the mirror every single morning and say, I did the right thing. I have asked tough questions, and I have been a pain in the neck, I'm sure, for a lot of premiers. I've heard other parts of body as and well. other parts as well. I've had people call me this week and say, you know, I used to kick in the TV set every time you were on. But people at the end of the day have said, yes, you were tough, but you were fair. And I don't think I could ask for anything more than that. It's been an honor to work with you and a pleasure to oh, call you, my friend. Right back at you. Thank you so much. And to the people who've listened to this program and the CBC, I... Uh, my heart goes out to you for all your support. Over we shall miss you. Thank you very much. Robert Fisher, anchor, provincial affairs specialist, journalist extraordinaire, retires today after 49 years in broadcasting.